Welcome back to the channel, this is Abba with Coffee and Code. Today we'll be having a look at something called Try Pass. Have you ever made a program that looked as similar in structure to this? You've asked the user to enter a number. You've then stored it as an integer and read it into the console read line, converted it to integer 32, and then something bad happened. Let me demonstrate. So a perfect value would be something like 50. And then the code will continue and it will just print out 15 to the console. What happens if they type in 15 followed by a space and a H by accident and you press enter and something really bad happens and then your program can't run. So if we run this without debugging and we try it now and put a H and press enter then you get an exception and the program will close. You don't want that to happen in your program so this is why they've invented try pass. And what try pass will try to do is it will try and pass the integer for you and it will let you know if the conversion has been successful and therefore you can use it from there. You can ask the user to enter a number. And then what we can do is we can store that into a string variable instead. So let's take this in steps. So let's just make sure that our output is indeed correct. And if we type in 15h, then we get return 15h. And because it's stored as a string, then we don't have any problems here. So this is how the try pass function works. It's inside the int32 library and it's a static function so we don't need to create anything. So we can type in try pass and then open the parentheses and the first parameter as it says here, a string containing a number to convert. So our num input is what the user has just typed the value into so we can use that and if we press comma then our second parameter comes up and it says here when the method has returned it will contain the integer if the conversion succeeded or zero if the conversion failed. That's fine. So what we can do in here, we can type out num. And what this will do is it will output the value into a num variable, which now we will create. So we can say int num and we make it equal to zero and then it will be overridden here. Through our try pass function, it says it converts a string representation of a number to a 32-bit signed integer equivalent and return value indicates whether the conversion is succeeded. So here, true if s is converted successfully, otherwise false. And because this returns a true or false, we have a couple of options. We can star in a bool, or we can just type in success, and then maybe we can just do a print to the console and just see what could set success contains. And then maybe we can add a hyphen and insert num in just to see what it returns. So let's just run this. And we can have 15f. So it contains false because it's failed to convert it, and zero because it failed to convert the value. As it said in here when we type this in, it said our zero if the conversion failed. So we know that's kind of working. So let's restart the program and type in a real value, 15. So now it says true because the conversion has succeeded, and we actually have our value 15. So now what we can do is we can split this into an if step. So we can say if success, and then we can print out num, and maybe on the else, we can just print out incorrect value entered, and then leave it as that. So now if we take all of our outputs, just so our output looks cleaner. So now all we're doing is letting the user enter a number, reading their value as a string, Initializing our num variable, which will contain the output. We try and pass. We try and pass the value that they entered in the console, and we output it to this num variable. And whether or not this has been successful gets placed into a boolean called success. If the boolean successful is indeed true, output the number to the console, or we can tell them that the incorrect value has entered. So now if we try and run this code, and now if we try 15f, incorrect value entered. And if we run it again, and we can just try 15 on its own, then we have our 15 returned. So now we know in this branch right here, that our num variable contains the integer representation of the string that they entered initially. And if they entered an incorrect value, I guess what you could do is set another boolean flag to false, and then you can contain this within a while loop. So we can set up something like a bool, b continue equals true, while B continue, and then we can place everything inside here, inside here. 
And if the incorrect value is entered, then I guess we would set it to true, but there's no point in setting a value to true again. So we can say bcontinue equals false in here. And just to make sure this worked, let's put a goodbye message at the end. Enter a number, 15. So now it says goodbye, because our integer has actually been successfully converted. If we press F5 and try 15F, then it says incorrect value entered, and it asks us to do it again until we keep entering something that is an actual integer value, like 200. And now it says goodbye. So now we've created is a safe way to let the user type in any value they want and convert it to an integer without an exception being occurred. When exceptions occurred, our program will close down and then you won't be able to recover any of the data that was stored in the software at that moment in time. So we will lose everything. So you want to avoid exceptions as much as possible. Try pass is perfect for that. It will try and convert this string value into an integer. And if it is successful, it will place the value inside num and return true inside the success variable. And then we can continue with our code. And if it fails, then success will equal false and our num will be initialized back to zero. This is perfect for our program because even if they type in something that's not an integer, then our program will not crash. If you wanted this code to look a little bit tidier, then indeed you can copy this code straight into the if statement and you don't need to have the boolean variable defined. And if you also wanted to get rid of this integer number, then you can put out int num and then you can remove this variable. So now it looks a lot cleaner. And if you have a look, it should still work. 15 and then a bad value. There we go. Thank you for tuning in. I hope this video helped. I'm going to be making a C-sharp course coming up soon, so keep your eye out. In the meantime, if you want to check out my Patreon to support the channel, I'd greatly appreciate it. If you have any questions, please drop them in the comments below, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next one.